It's the meta. I'm your host, Jay Larson, and joining me is the one, the only, William Hungerford. Hello, Will. There's probably another. There's probably other William Hungerford. I mean, out there. that's okay. That's probably true. But there's there's only one William Hungerford in my heart. Aw, thank you, Jay. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. We're on Skype. Good to talk to you. Likewise. Uh, Jay, I, agree. I have to ask real fast. Are you going to Adepticon? So, yes and no. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm arriving in Go Chicago on. on Wednesday. I am hopefully taking you out to dinner on Wednesday night. And then I am going Aww. to Tony Riccio's house on Thursday and avoiding the con the rest of the time and the shrines of Nurgle constructed therein. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I, I'm going to be at Adepticon. Um, so I'm happy that I at least I get to see, I imagine you and Tony, I assume we'll go out to PF Chang's. Um, hope, yeah, hopefully it might not, it might not be. We'll, we'll Tony, I'm not going to be with Tony on Wednesday. Okay. But okay. We'll see. Well, yeah. But, um, and I, I should probably mention for everybody listen, broken anvil. He is going, going to Adepticon. Uh, we are going to be demoing this year, so we're not vending because the game hasn't launched yet, but um, we are demoing Rivenstone uh, on an awesome table, fully painted, you know, everything, uh, all the components, so this is like pre, pre-launch. pre um, Everybody who comes by to demo the game or talk to us, we're going to give a free Rivenstone miniature uh, while we have supplies. Like, we're bringing a lot, but, you know, eventually we will run out. While um, supplies last. But yeah, so if you're coming to a yeah, yeah, while supplies last. So, but yeah, we're there all weekend. Like, we land on the 22nd, there for the whole show, and we're going to be doing nothing but demoing Rivenstone the entire time. So, we're, I believe, going to be in the adventure hall, like right outside the exhibit hall. Um, okay. So, if, if people want to come check out a demo, come find us. Because it was definitely like a, what was it, last minute that we got in, but it kind of was. Like, we're, you know, we're still pre launch of the game. So, right. it was like, you know, well, we have dice. Well, we have the tokens. Because so we didn't want to show up with any proxy stuff. We wanted to show up with the real deal. And the real deal came together in time for us to make it to that. So, yeah, come by. Come say hi. Come get a demo. Um, come tell me your favorite does, P.F. Chang stories. Does that mean that I get to order my, my starter set from you pretty soon, Will? So, we have announced kind of what the launch of the game is going to look like. And then what we're going to do from there. So, to, to fund and launch the game... We're we going to go through Kickstarter mm -hmm. to get it off the ground. And then, um, but we, after that, the game will continue outside of Kickstarter. Like, we plan on having regular, you know, bi-monthly, probably like, I would say, maybe not every month, but probably every two months, releases. Just, you know, new stuff constantly coming out. Like, this is a, a lifetime game. It's not like um, a one and done. Um, and all of that's going to be through, you know, get it at your, your retailer. We are still sorting out the details of if we're going to do direct to retailers, if we're going to do distribution, what that's going to look like, how that's going to look for international. Those are all details that our sales team is finalizing right now. So I don't have any details on that, but I can tell everybody like the, the original initial funding for the game will be Kickstarter. We'll launch that way. And then it'll be sort of business as normal uh, for people to go play at their local store. Awesome. Well, that's some, Exciting news. Um, yeah. You guys don't have yet the uh, Kickstarter launch date, correct? We do. It is coming out at the end of April. Um, so oh, the nice. last week of April uh, will be the launch of the Kickstarter. It'll run through May. Then, you know, I imagine that our launch delivery time is going to be probably within a year from an ending. I wouldn't be surprised if it's it's sooner. A lot of it, like a lot of the production materials are done. We have the dice. We have the tokens and stuff like that. But those are our, you know, like our production samples we're using. A lot of what we're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. for is to then fund ordering 30, 40, 50, 60,000 of whatever an item is. Right. Every starter box comes with eight dice. And so you think, you know, if we sell just a thousand of each faction starter to begin with, the, you know, 4,000. So we got to get 32,000 dice. Little things like that. So right. uh, we'll see how long that takes, plus the actual production of the miniatures which we're all doing in-house like in -house, we're doing yeah. all the all the mold making all of the engineering and all of the actual production is happening in-house using seocast which the good thing is seocast can um can spin up miniatures really fast um but we have to see you know how many are we making and then we kind of go from there well uh 
David has a question that is just perfectly suited for uh, what you were, what you just said. Um, so he says, okay. can you give us some details about starter products for Rivenstone? Yes. So I can't give you price just yet, though. I think the the price, the entry to the game is going to be incredibly reasonable. Um, I think when people see the amount of stuff that they're going to get for the price of the starter, um, and it just in general, the price of the a starter box, they're going to be very happy. Um, it, it will not cause an arm and a leg to get into Rivenstone by any means. Um, the starters that are going to exist, and there'll be four of them, um, are fully playable, like standard size army. Um, that was something that was really important to us is, you know, you see some games where the starter product kind of lets you play like a version of the game, but not like really like what is the the normal full size game. And so you're yeah. like, oh, I buy a starter for 150 bucks or 100 bucks, and then I need to spend another three or 400 to play at the level that everyone else in the store is playing. So every Rivenstone starter is like, you could buy that, build it in the store, and then play. Um, the two sizes of the game are two hero games and three hero games. A two hero game is two hero models, three groups of followers, and one barracks. A three hero game is three heroes, four groups of followers, and one barracks. So all of the starters are two hero starters. You get two heroes, you get three groups of followers, you get a barracks, you get Rivenstone deposit miniatures, rule book, dice tokens, everything you need to play. So we, we're big fans of that initial experience of just like, I buy my box, I'm good to go. Um, there will not be a two-player starter. There will just be these one-player starters, but these one-player starters are so comprehensive that like um, you and your buddy just each buy the one you want, and then you are you have everything you need to play. And then it's just a matter of, we wanted to give you the foundation so that from then on, all the expansions and new models that come out, you're just buying what you want to add to your force, not what you need to complete a force all right so next group of questions come from ben up um he says yep. uh first off how are you will uh, i am uh mental at the moment um, <laughs> i've had construction going on at my house for the last two well i've had construction going on at my my house for since the beginning of the year since last year april but for the last two weeks they've had to have workers come inside um to redo one of the walls and i live in a condo and um, this was a decision of, like, the association that owns all the condos. So I just sort of, like, found out this was happening. And so I've had to have – I've had to work from home for basically the last two weeks letting people in and out of my house, um, which is fine. But all day working to the sound of buzz saws and hammer is uh, – and you can't leave because I've got to be there to let people in and out um, – is maddening. So if you hear a little bit of an edge in my voice, it's just <laughs> like I'm finally away for a day. And I'm like, oh, freedom. Plus, world events right now have not been great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, my, my honest answer is I'm a little on edge. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, will you be playing Elden Ring? Yes, absolutely. Um, I was going to play it yesterday, but you know, too much going on in the real world. So I will be trying to play it some this weekend. Um, I cannot wait. Awesome. Um. Next one, uh, have you watched the Vox Machina animated series? What did you think of it? I have not. I've heard a lot about it, but my TV time is very, very limited at the moment. And um, the last thing I finished was Midnight Mass. And, Ooh, that was uh, really good. Yeah, Peacemaker and Boba Fett were the last three shows that like I've been able to watch to completion. Um, <laughs> okay, I have to ask, were you, were you, how, how would you rate your satisfaction level with the Book of Boba Fett? Okay, spoilers. So if you're listening to this sure, and you have not finished Boba Fett, this is your spoiler warning. Skip ahead one minute. Um, seeing Cad Bane was fucking amazing. I have been, I love Cad Bane. He's one, probably my favorite Star Wars character. Um, and I don't want to believe that he's dead. Yeah. I, I, it's I'm very <laughs> sad that he got brought into live action. It was so good. And then he was only there for two episodes. And I was like, no, not like this. Yeah. Not like this. It seems so um, weird to me that that a you know I I went into this not really having any reason to uh, care about Boba Fett and left feeling the same way and then felt like uh, one of the most interesting characters in the show they didn't feature nearly enough and potentially killed him for you know I don't know why so yeah yeah. 
uh, my feelings on the show was um, it's not what I expected. Um, I, there were definitely a lot of a lot of parts of it I enjoyed, and then there were some parts of it I would say I I did not enjoy um, as much. I mean, of the Disney Plus Star Wars shows, it's my least favorite, but it's still Star Wars, and it 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 wasn't bad Star Wars to me. Like there were parts I was kind of like, okay, this is a little slow, or I wish this had you know gone a little bit you know faster, or this plot was a little strange to me. But there was a lot of really good stuff. There was a lot of really awesome moments in the season my opinion most of them unfortunately did not have to do with Boba Fett all right so next question uh as someone who's not an amusement park kind of guy what's the big appeal of Disneyland slash Disney World um it's very unique for everybody everybody has their own like people that are born in Anaheim around the area the park is just like a thing you just uh it's just it's just there for people like myself who's born in Louisiana um it was so i don't know it's i'm trying to figure out how to describe it what is the appeal is that a i'm a disney fan like i like disney movies i like disney shows and i'm talking pre-marvel pre-star wars as well like but aladdin lion king winnie the pooh i enjoy that stuff um so going to a place that celebrates that i enjoy but it's an experience where especially disney world where everything is catered for you that you truly can like just forget about things for a while like going on a vacation where you go overseas and, and visit another country or go to a different state you know you're there you're having a good time but you're still like in the real world and you still have real world thoughts in your head but i feel like when you go to a disney park you can just get away from it all for a bit and they do a very good job of uh, facilitating that experience and so it's it's really nice all right so next question um he says, does something similar exist for other big entertainment groups in the U.S.? I remember something about going to Movie World in Germany when I was a, was little, which was mostly a Warner Brothers thing. Or does Disney have the monopoly or monopoly adjacent on amusement parks in the U.S.? Oh, no. There's, oh, there's the entire Six Flags line, which is all Warner Brothers characters. You can go on like, Batman rides and stuff like that. And then you've got things like Legoland. Out in California, there, there's a lot of theme parks in America. Universal Studios. However, yeah, Universal Studios is probably Universal Studios is probably the, the next closest to the yeah. Disney experience in that really immersive experience. Um, and then there's the ones that are just like you know straight adrenaline rides, which are great. Yeah, I love those too. But no, Disney does not have the monopoly. They're just sort of them and Universal are at the top of the line. Um, next question is he says I'm planning a Portugal trip in the not too distant future. Uh, any trips planned on your end? Uh, Adepticon will be the, the big trip coming up for me. And then beyond that, not really. Still still pandemic time, still trying to to be as safe as I can. You know, last trip I went on in the last two years was to go see my family last Christmas. And then Adepticon will be the first convention I returned to. Um, but still being careful about how many shows um, go to until we continue to see more data and numbers that, you know, the things are getting a little bit more under control. So I'm, I'm easing back into it, but yeah. not at that point. Yet. Um, next question is what's your best tourist in own country moment? Tourist in own country moment. Um, I went on a road trip from Seattle to Mount Rushmore, then back where we stopped at Glacier National Park. We stopped in Yellowstone for a few days and Yellowstone was probably my best tourist in own country moment because Yellowstone is the Disney World of hiking. Um, <laughs> I we spent three days there because we were on this. We were on a two-week road trip, um, and we spent three days there and didn't even begin to scratch the surface yeah. of the one area that we were. Because um, yeah. there's a, there's these like regions of Yellowstone, and it took us from when we went through the Eastern Gate. It took us two hours of just Yellowstone driving to get to the part of Yellowstone we were staying at. And then for the next three days, we hung out mainly in that area that we went and saw Old Faithful and, you know, some of the other geysers and the, the pools and things. But by the time I left it, I was just standing there and went to the, the Grand Tetons next. And I remember just being like, I could come back here for a month and still not get even close to experiencing everything this place has to do. So I, that was my... My moment of like touristy awe was in Yellowstone. Yeah, Yellowstone. So Brian and I live close enough to Yellowstone that we can literally do day trips there. Yeah. Um, and it's Brian's 
uh, one of his favorite places on earth. And so we, we go there a fair bit. Yeah. It's if you've never been and you have the chance go, it lives up if to you the like height. <laughs> yeah, it, it absolutely lives up to the height. Um, okay. So next question, uh, any YouTube channels you'd recommend? I discovered a couple recently, but mostly with depressing content and I'm in the mood to try to trick the algorithm to give me some better ones. Yep. Uh, go watch Tom Cardi. Tom Cardi is a, uh, Australian, uh, music comedian who makes some really fantastic songs. Uh, I would recommend starting with his like Lord of the Rings song and then, um, a few others, uh, just go really explore the space and have a good time with Tom Cardi. Um, did you know gaming, if you're into video games is a very, is a fantastic channel to give you all sorts of weird trivia, uh, and background information about your favorite video games. And like it, if you want to watch basically a documentary on your favorite video game, but present it in a very fun way. Uh, did you know gaming is good for that? Similarly, if you're into weird glitches and hidden things and boundary breaks of stuff you're not supposed to see, uh, Odd Header and Boundary Break are both really good. Those are both video game related. Um, Tasting History with Max Miller is a channel where a former Disney employee who lives in Florida, what he does is he looks at recipes from ancient history and recreates food using the old recipe from like, you know, the 1600s, 1700s, stuff like that, while telling you about it. So if you want to learn what kind of like cakes Romans ate and then learn how to make that cake, or what was the first birthday cake and how was the first birthday cake different than what we're used to, or even just like ancient like meat soups and stuff like that. He has a lot of really interesting information. So tasting history with Max Miller, uh, I think those will give you some algorithm changes one i'll throw out there is so uh, i watched station 11 on hbo which i um recommend if if you haven't watched that yet um but in that show there's um one of the character plays um la campanella from by elites and so i i did a youtube search because i wanted to, to watch some people playing that and there is a, a YouTube channel called Rousseau that it is him playing a bunch of different songs. And anytime he hits a piano key, um, it lights, there's it, near the keyboard, something lights up basically. And it's, it's anyways, the graphics on it are really cool. And especially on some of the really complex songs, you, you, you'll watch it and just be like, holy cow, how does... How can humanity achieve this? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like the, I've, I've watched those videos of, of people playing piano where it shows the, the, when they press the key, there's like a bar lit up. Yeah. So that's what like, it is. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those are amazing. You're like, what? Okay. You watch like old, like Beethoven and Mozart being played. You're like, okay, I guess they, yep. That's insane. Um, and that was, that was basically the, uh, listener questions for this um this month uh was there anything that you still had to go over or, or any questions i should have asked you will no no the the main thing for everybody listening is just like I, if you're coming to adapticon come say hi you know it's gonna be really good to get to yeah a again. um come say hi um you know come talk to us about ribbon stone even if you don't have time for a demo come talk to us about the game if we have a free mini we'll give you one if you have time for a demo sit down with us like let's play like we want to play this game with as many people as we can. Um, it's had some really like Oz and myself worked on it design wise. Faye has been doing development. Like it's a lot of people that you're probably familiar with. And we've made a game that I think is fantastic and a lot of fun to play and a lot of fun to collect. And then we would just want to like show it to people. So if you have a chance, come check it out. Awesome. Well, Will, I'm excited to see you hopefully soonish in in the I'm real space to change, DJ. heck yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you sir and have all a right, good well, weekend okay. yep all right, bye. You as well